Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the most common infectious disease, infection, that is dengue fever. We all know that it is a mosquito borne disease. They are also called as viral hemorrhagic fevers. That is because they produce uh, during infection, they can produce thrombocytopenia, vascular leak, uh, increased PTNR, rapidity, bleeding, uh, shock, all these things. They, so, they call, they are known as, they are better known as viral hemorrhagic fever. In that dengue fever is there, Lassa fever is there, Marbuck. Ebola virus is there, yellow viral fever is there, Crimean Congo virus is there, Handan virus is there. In that dengue virus is very common in India and some areas we can even see presentation like Handan fever. The difference between dengue and Handan fever will be very, very narrow, both having similar clinical features. But renal failure is very common in Handan virus, but dengue fever normally we do not see any uh, uh, renal failure, but patient who is having multi organ dysfunction, later stages of uh, severe dengue, you can even get um, renal failure. This is otherwise called as break bone fever because most of the patients uh, who develops dengue fever will have severe back pain, and that is why it is called as break bone fever. The organism is dengue fever, dengue virus, that is a flavi virus. Spread is by a mosquito that is a vector, Aedes aegypti mosquito you can see here. Incubation period is 2 to 7 days. This mosquito looks like tiger, sometimes it is called as tiger mosquito also. Now, prodrome that is very important. Any infection we can have a prodrome, any viral infection you can have a prodrome. Like two to two to three days fever, weakness, mild fever, weakness, then severe myalgia will be there, weakness will be there, headache will be there. In that myalgia is very, very typical because uh, common conditions, infectious conditions which can produce myalgia is one is dengue fever, another one is leptospirosis. Both will have severe myalgia and back pain. And uh, if you see the symptoms, then patient can have fever, that is continuous fever, but there is some uh, like uh, curve in between that like patient have see high degree fever like this for some days there will be uh, a relief of uh, symptom. So, that is why it is called a saddle back fever. So, that is very important saddle back fever is very important fever of uh, dengue fever feature of dengue fever. Then um, uh, headache is very common, sweating is very common. Uh, joint pains are very, very important. Most of the viral fevers can have some amount of joint pains, but dengue fever will have severe joint pain and severe back pain. That is why it is called as break bone fever. And eye pain is very, very classical. Eye pain, lacrimation, eye congestion, all these things are very common. Any patient who is having high degree fever with congestion of eyes, we normally think that it is uh, conjunctivitis, but dengue fever also you can have similar feature. Anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, loose stools, another important feature. Like many patients who is having dengue fever, the presenting symptom will be uh, diarrhea. And some patients can have relative bradycardia because uh, uh, like any other infection, if you can uh, follow up the infection, infectious patients, you can see that uh, patient who is having high degree fever will have high heart rate. But infections like dengue or endric fever, they, they are pulse rate response will be will not be very high. They have a blended response. This is called as relative bradycardia. Nymphadenopathy is not very common, but you can see. Rashes also seen in many, many patients, macular, papillar, scarlet uh, rashes, uh, mainly on the trunk you can see in patients with uh, dengue fever. And most of the rashes, most of the infections who is having rashes, uh, ha hands are normally spared that hands or palms and soles are not involved, but co conditions like uh, hand, foot, mouth disease, that is also virus, their hands are involved uh, or a patient who is having high degree fever and you give some antibiotic, antibiotic reactions, there also hands are involved. But dengue fever and all, most of the viral fevers, hands are spared, palms are spared, that is very important. The, so, rashes are not common in our population but it is very, very common in other countries. 
No, there are some classification given by WHO, grade 1, fever, body pain, myalgia, other symptoms like uh, uh, sweating, palpitation and all. Positive tourniquet means if you put a tourniquet and keep uh, like that we do normally with BP apparatus, BP cuff slightly above the systolic BP, you keep for some time, you can see lot of petechial rashes in the upper limb. That is why most of the patients who is having dengue fever, we do not uh, do the uh, like uh, uh, BP, BP, uh, uh, BP testing frequently because if you tie the BP cuff and uh, slightly you delay the uh, measurement, you can see petechial rashes are forming in the cubital area. So, try to avoid this unnecessarily BP examination in this type of patient, one or two times you can see. But the problem is if the patient is having hypotension, then you have to see frequent BPs. Grade 2 spontaneous bleeding can occur, that is mostly because of uh, thrombocytopenia. Grade 3 spontaneous bleeding and circulatory failure, we will see why the circulatory failure occur. Then hypotension, uh, uh, that hypotension is due to actually capillary leak, that also we will see. Grade 4 is severe shock, this is World Health Organization classification. Now, what are the clinical features, we have already seen that clinical features. Uh, there will be severe fever, high degree fever and uh, back pain, some patients can have diarrhea, patient can have redness of eye, severe bone pain, arthralgia will be there, that is why it is called as break bone fever. Then on blood test you can see leukopenia is, most of the viral fevers you can see leukopenia, but here it is very classical leukopenia with thrombocytopenia is classical sign. Many patients can have severe abdominal pain, uh, pleural effusion, ascites, mucosal bleeding, uh, altered behavior, hepatomegaly uh, and hematocrit is very important investigation. Whenever there is hemoconcentration, uh, here the hemoconcentration is due to vascular leak. Whenever there is hemoconcentration, you can see hematocrit values will be very high. Severe dengue means it is because of plasma, uh, plasma leak from the vascular compartment and patient develops hypotension, shock, patient can have severe hemorrhage, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. STOT, STPT is very high, more than thousands. That is all indicative of severe dengue fever. Dengue shock syndrome is mainly due to vascular leak. We already told vascular leak. That will, will be explained in uh, coming slides in detail. So, dengue shock syndrome is a severe type of dengue where the patient develops hypotension, shock, multi-organ dysfunction. Now, what is dengue hemorrhagic features? There are four cardinal features. So, fever lasting to 2 to 7 days. Uh, hemorrhagic tendency that is very important, patient can have thrombocytopenia, patient can have elevated PTINR, patient can have elevated APTT, patient can have uh, low fibrinogen, all these things can contribute, but most important thing is low platelet. See, this can be demonstrated by a positive tourniquet test, you tie a tourniquet in the upper limb, you can see here lot of uh, purpuric rashes in the upper limb. Increased vascular permeability that we cannot measure, but the thing is, when there is vascular leak, there will be hypotension and it is uh, it is indicated by a lab investigation that is hematocrit values are increased, more than 20 percent rise in hematocritic value can tell you that vascular leak is a pure effusion, ascites, all these things are markers of uh, uh, vascular leak. Very important thing is patient can have thrombocytopenia. Whenever platelet count is less than 1 lakh, we call it as thrombocytopenia. Normally, it is 1.5 to 3.5 cells per cubic millimeter, but if the platelets are less than 1 lakh, we can call it as thrombocytopenia. Dengue shock syndrome is used when shock is present. Shock means hypotension is present along with these four criteria. Then we can call dengue shock syndrome. So, what is endothelial dysfunction? That is very important. So, whenever there is a vascular, uh, sorry, whenever there is an infection and macrophage activation syndrome or whatever it is, uh, uh, there will be lot of inflammatory cells are produced uh, during this process, inflammatory cells are produced, that produce lot of cytokines, that cytokines act in the blood vessel and they produce leak in the blood vessel. So, you can get lot of leak in the blood vessel, so that is very important, so leaks can be there in the blood vessel, through this leak blood or uh, plasma can go out. So, that is very important all this, uh, uh, all this inflammatory markers, whenever we are seeing inflammatory marker, one of the important inflammatory marker is CRP, CRP will be very high in dengue shock syndrome, 
and ferritin that is another important inflammatory marker that also will be elevated. So, here the problem is macrophages are activated that produce macrophage activation syndrome, cytokines are released that cytokines are producing endothelial damage, through that endothelial damage the blood will come out, blood or body fluid will come out. So, vascular collapse will occur, BP can be reduced, BP can be reduced, hypotension ok. So, this is called as vascular leak or endothelial dysfunction leading to vascular leak that produces dengue shock syndrome. The expanded dengue syndrome means uh, unusual or a typical manifestation of patients with dengue. They can have neurological problem like patient can have encephalopathy, patient can have seizures, hepatic like STOT, STPT can be in thousands, PTNR can be elevated, patient can have renal failure like creatinine can be elevated, urine output can be reduced. But renal failure is not very, very common in dengue syndrome, it is rare. But if you see handarm virus that is similar to dengue, renal failure is very, very common. But a patient who is having dengue shock syndrome, multi organ dysfunction syndrome, then renal failure is a part of that multi organ dysfunction syndrome. So, that is very important. So, what are the investigations we do in dengue, uh, dengue fever? So, antigen can be tested in the first week, NS1 antigen is typically positive in first 7 days. We are testing the antigen, we are not testing the antibody in first week. Because antibodies are formed only after 5 to 7 days. So, no need to test the anti antibody like dengue IgM in the first week. RT PCR also can be tested in dengue, uh, dengue fever in the initial days. But after 7 days, the IgM antibody, dengue IgM can be positive. So, instead of that, if you do dengue IgM in the first week, it will be negative. So, do not do dengue IgM in the first week. So, blood, blood investigation, the most important investigation in CBC, complete blood count is thrombocytopenia. Many patients who is having dengue fever can have thrombocytopenia. Some patients can have leukopenia and some patients can have elevated STOT, STPT, liver enzymes, maybe in hundreds, 300, 400, then it will come back. Some patients can have pancreatitis, amylase lipase can be elevated. And creatinine is very, very rare. Elevation of the creatinine and renal failure is very, very rare in dengue fever. But vascular leak can produce pre-renal type of renal failure and elevation of the creatinine. IgM and IgG tests both are there. But remember, we have to do, we have to depend only IgM because that indicates an acute infection. IgM positive means an acute and current infection. But IgG can be positive in various conditions. We do not do IgG normally. So, normally nowadays we have NS1 antigen test. We diagnose with NS1 antigen because second week most of the time patient will recover from the fever. There is no point in doing IgM test also. I, NS1 antigen or PCR is the most important investigation in dengue nowadays. Now, this is a chart how the patient's prognosis occurs in dengue fever. Serology you can see here initially IgM will be positive then IgG will be positive and the feature will be high degree fever initially high degree fever then a saddle back type of fever fever comes down then again uh, after 2 3 days little more fever will be there. Clinical features mostly they have uh, high degree fever bone pains back pains redness of eye then some dehydration some patients will go to thrombocytopenia and dehydration shock. Laboratory investigation, we already seen platelets are very, very important. Another important laboratory investigation is ferritin. So, you know that ferritin is a marker of inflammation like CRP and that is a highly sensitive marker. Whenever there is dengue shock syndrome or severe dengue, extended dengue, dengue or macrophage activation syndrome, ferritin will be very, very high. So, remember if the patient is having dengue and ferritin is very high, there is a high chance of patient going to multi organ dysfunction in that type of patients. Like ferritin 8000, 9000, 10000 with a dengue fever, there is a high chance of multi organ dysfunction in that type of patient. And in dengue fever, fever will be treated by paracetamol or bedrest or uh, tepid sponging in children like that. 
But remember, thrombocytopenia is one condition, most of the dengue fever because uh, that can create problem. So, less than 1 lakh, we do not do anything, but if it is less than 10,000 cubic millimeter or 10,000 cells, we have to transfuse because that, uh, that type of thrombocytopenia or that severity of thrombocytopenia can produce spontaneous bleeding. And if the, that we will discuss afterwards, but the most important thing in dengue fever in an emergency room will be hypotension. How do you treat hypotension in emergency room? Whatever may be the etiology. So, here we know that it is vascular leak, the uh, intravascular compartment is collapsed. So, you have to give fluids. So, normally we give normal saline or ringer lactate 30 ml per kg body weight. It should be infused to our 15 minutes and then continuous infusion can be given. So, when there is vascular leak, the whatever we are given fluid, it can go out of the uh, go out of the intravascular compartment to extravascular compartment. Even then to improve the BP, we have to give fluids. There is no uh, definitive role for corticosteroids in dengue, but we know that it is an infectious and inflammatory condition. There is high degree of inflammation, especially when the ferritin levels are very high. Patient can go to macrophage activation syndrome. So, steroids are not indicated in a normal dengue fever, but when the ferritin levels are very, very high, steroids may be indicated or to prevent macrophage activation syndrome, you can give uh, steroids in high degree infection with high degree ferritin levels. Otherwise, steroids are not indicated in dengue. It may give symptomatic improvement in the patient sim uh, like a fever, body pain and all, but normally it will not improve any other clinical feature. Now, platelet transfusions are reserved only if the platelet counts are very, very low like less than 10,000 patients can have spontaneous bleeding, you can give platelet transfusion. Usual dose is 1 unit per 10 kg body weight and each uh, like a unit should be transfused to our 5 to 10 minutes. So, when we are transfusing platelet uh, normally, it stay in our body for 1 or 2 days maximum because uh, normally when our own platelet leaves in our body for 7 days, but when we are transfusing that is considered as a foreign cell and our immune system will destroy that. So, within 24 hours to 48 hours, it will be completely destroyed. So, unnecessarily transfusing platelet will not improve patient's condition. Only if there is a significant bleeding tendency or you anticipate a bleed because the platelet counts are very low or you want to do a surgery like you want to keep the platelet count above 50,000 in a minimal procedure or you want to keep the platelet above 1 lakh in a major procedure, you have to transfuse. Otherwise, Blood transfusion or platelet transfusion is not indicated in dengue in a regular case. Now, platelet transfusion, we have a pooled platelet or single donor platelet. The difference is pooled platelet means from different, uh, different persons you are collecting blood and you are making it a pool. That contains platelets from different persons. So, antigenicity is different for each type of platelet. So, when we are transfusing large number of different group platelets, there is high chance for developing different types of antibodies and destruction of the platelet also will be faster when you are giving repeated transition. Single donor platelet means only one donor is or only one type of antibodies are produced. If you are taking another person platelet on next day or third day, there is high, there is less chance for antibody mediated destruction. That is one advantage. And the amount of platelet increase is more when we compare with single donor uh, like a multi donor platelet or pooled platelet to a single donor. Single donor platelet normally increases counts very high. So, that is also an advantage. So, depending on the clinical scenario only we give transfusion. If less than 10,000 there is a high risk of bleeding you can give transfusion. Suppose you have a minor procedure you, you want to do a central line or something then you can keep the platelet until higher 50,000. Suppose you have a major surgery like neurosurgical procedure or abdominal surgery, then keep the uh, platelet above 1 lakh. So, vaccines are available at present, but not available in our part of the country. So, we do not try vaccines in uh, dengue fever, but it is available. 
so we can give even vaccine to prevent dengue fever but the most important thing is uh, to avoid mosquito bites that is that is the most important thing so we have discussed about dengue fever one of the important zoonotic infection uh, spread through mosquitoes especially in rainy season uh, dengue virus or this uh, uh, mosquitoes grow in fresh water that is very important so new season rainy season dengue fever will increase in, in, in presentation and the most common presentation is high degree fever bone pain back pain uh, conjunctival redness but most of these patients recover without any problem some patients will develop mild thrombocytopenia some patients can have severe thrombocytopenia and bleeding tendency some patients can have vascular leak hypotension there is dengue shock syndrome rarely they go to macrophage activation syndrome so investigation wise ns1 antigen is very very important in dengue fever in acute infection igm is an, uh, an investigation which can be done only after 7 days of the infection and there is no major treatment for dengue fever you try to prevent the infection by avoiding mosquito bite that is very important fluid uh, hypotension shock should be treated with normal saline platelet transfusion is only necessary if it is less than 10000 or there is a significant bleeding and macrophage activation is one of the important problem in dengue fever many patients with dengue fever now you can see the ferritin levels are very very high that patients can go to macrophage activation syndrome multi organ dysfunction syndrome all these things in that subset of the patients steroid may be helpful but steroids are not very helpful in a normal dengue fever it may give symptomatic relief that's all but in macrophage activation syndrome definitely you have to treat the patient with dengue fever thank you